നമ്മൾ ഇന്ന് പഠിക്കാൻ പോകുന്ന റാബിറ്റിൻ്റെ നെർവസ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിനെ കുറിച്ചാണ് പക്ഷേ റാബിറ്റ് നെർവസ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ രണ്ട് മെയിൻ പാർട്സ് ഉള്ളത് സെൻട്രൽ നെർവസ് സിസ്റ്റം ആൻഡ് പെരിഫറൽ നെർവസ് സിസ്റ്റം സെൻട്രൽ നെർവസ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിന് രണ്ട് പാർട്സാണ് ബ്രെയിനും സ്പൈനൽ കോഡും പെരിഫറൽ നെർവസ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ ക്രേനിയൽ നെർവ്സും സ്പൈനൽ നെർവ്സും അപ്പോൾ ബ്രെയിനിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരു പന്ത്രണ്ട് പെയർ നെർവുകൾ അതായത് ബ്രെയിനിൻ്റെ ഇരുവശത്തുനിന്നുമായിട്ട് പന്ത്രണ്ട് പെയർ നെർവുകൾ പുറത്തേക്ക് വരുന്നുണ്ട് ദേ ആർ കോൾ ദ ക്രേനിയൽ നെർവ്സ് പിന്നെ സ്പൈനൽ കോഡിൽ നിന്ന് മുപ്പത്തേഴ് പെയർ നെർവ് വരുന്നുണ്ട് അതാണ് സ്പൈനൽ നെർവ്സ് അപ്പോൾ ഈ നെർവുകൾ ചേർന്നത് പെരിഫറൽ നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റവും ബ്രെയിനും സ്പൈനൽ കോഡും ചേർന്നത് സെൻട്രൽ നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം ഇനി ഈ പെരിഫറൽ നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിന് രണ്ട് പാർട്സാണ് ഒന്ന് സൊമാറ്റിക് ഒന്ന് ഓട്ടോണോമിക് സൊമാറ്റിക് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ഇഷ്ട നമ്മളുടെ കൈ മൂവ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കാല് മൂവ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതായത് നമ്മുടെ വിൽ അനുസരിച്ച് നമ്മുടെ വോളണ്ടറി ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസിനെ കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് പെരിഫറൽ നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിൻ്റെ ഏത് ഭാഗമാണോ അതിനെ നമ്മൾ സൊമാറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം എന്ന് പറയും എന്നാൽ നമുക്ക് വോളണ്ടറി ആയിട്ട് കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റാത്ത കുറേ ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് ഉണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ ഹാർട്ട് ബീറ്റ് അതുപോലെ നമ്മുടെ റെസ്പിറേഷൻ്റെ സമയത്ത് നമ്മുടെ മസിൽസിൻ്റെ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി അതുപോലെ നമ്മുടെ പ്യൂപ്പിൾ ഡൈലേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് യൂറിനറി ബ്ലാഡറിൻ്റെ കണ്ട്രാക്ഷൻ അങ്ങനത്തെ കുറേ ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസൊക്കെ നമ്മുടെ കൺട്രോളിൽ അല്ലാത്തതുണ്ട് ഇപ്പം നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ റാബിറ്റിനെ കുറിച്ചാണ് പഠിക്കുന്നത് ബട്ട് ഇത് മാമൽസിനൊക്കെ ഈ കാര്യം ആപ്ലിക്കബിളാണ് അപ്പോൾ ഇൻവോളണ്ടറി ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസിനെ കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഓട്ടോണോമിക് ഓട്ടോണോമിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം ഈ ഓട്ടോണോമിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിന് തന്നെ രണ്ട് പാർട്സാണ് ഒന്ന് സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് ഒന്ന് പാരാസിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് അപ്പോൾ ഓട്ടോണോമിക് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ എന്താ ഇൻവോളണ്ടറി ആക്ടിവിറ്റിയെ കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ ഇൻവോളണ്ടറി ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ആയതുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ സ്വന്തം ഇഷ്ടത്തിന് അല്ലാതെ നടക്കുക അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അതിനെ ആക്ടിവേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാനും നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിൻ്റെ ഒരു ഭാഗം വേണം അതിൻ്റെ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി കൂടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സപ്രസ് ചെയ്യാനും വേണം ഒരാൾ അപ്പോൾ അതിന് വേണ്ടി ഓട്ടോണോമിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിന് തന്നെ രണ്ട് ഏജൻറ്റുകൾ ഉണ്ടെന്ന് പറയാം ഒന്ന് സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം ഒന്ന് പാരാസിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം അപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ഹാർട്ടിൻ്റെ കേസ് എടുക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം ആവശ്യമുള്ള സമയത്ത് ഹാർട്ട് ബീറ്റ് കൂട്ടും നേരെ മറിച്ച് പാരാസിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം എന്താ ചെയ്യുക ഹാർട്ട് ബീറ്റ് കുറയ്ക്കും ഇതേപോലെ തന്നെ എന്നാൽ ഇപ്പോൾ വേറെ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ സ്റ്റമക്കിലുള്ള ഗ്യാസ്ട്രിക് ഗ്ലാൻസ് ഉണ്ട് എൻസൈം പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യണത് അതിൻ്റെ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി പാരാസിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം കൂട്ടും നമ്മൾ ഭക്ഷണം കഴിക്കുന്ന സമയത്തൊക്കെ പക്ഷേ എന്നാൽ സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക് നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റം അതിൻ്റെ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി കുറയ്ക്കും മനസ്സിലായോ അപ്പോൾ ചില ഓർഗൻസിലൊക്കെ സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക്ക് ആക്ടിവേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയാണെങ്കിൽ മറ്റ് ചില ഓർഗൻസിൽ സിമ്പത്തറ്റിക്ക് ഇനാക്ടിവേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുക അപ്പോൾ അവർ രണ്ടുപേരും ഓപ്പോസിറ്റ് ആയിട്ടാണ് ആക്ഷൻ ആൻഡഗോണിസ്റ്റിക് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആക്ഷൻ എന്ന് പറയും പിന്നെ ബ്രെയിൻ നമുക്ക് ആദ്യം ബ്രെയിനിലേക്ക് പോകാം അപ്പോൾ ഒന്നുകൂടെ പറയാം സെൻട്രൽ നെർവ് സിസ്റ്റത്തിൽ രണ്ട് പാർട്സ് ബ്രെയിനും സ്പൈനൽ കോഡ് അപ്പോൾ ആദ്യം ബ്രെയിനിലേക്ക് പോകാം ബ്രെയിനിന് മൂന്ന് പാർട്സാണ് ഫോർ ബ്രെയിൻ മിഡ് ബ്രെയിൻ ഹൈൻ ബ്രെയിൻ അതിൻ്റെ ടെക്നിക്കൽ ടേംസ് ആണ് പ്രോസൻ സെഫലോൺ മീസൻ സെഫലോൺ ആൻഡ് റോമ്പൻ സെഫ്ലോൺ പ്രോസൻ സെഫ്ലോൺ ഫോർ ബ്രെയിൻ മീസൻ സെഫ്ലോൺ മിഡ് ബ്രെയിൻ റോമ്പൻ സെഫ്ലോൺ ഹൈൻ ബ്രെയിൻ പ്രോസൻ സെഫ്ലോൺ അല്ലെ ഫോർ ബ്രെയിനിന് ഫോർ ബ്രെയിൻ്റെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് പാർട്സ് ഏതൊക്കെയാണ് ഒന്ന് സെറീബ്രൽ ഹെമിസ്ഫിയേഴ്സ് അതായത് ബ്രെയിൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും വെൽ ഡെവലപ്ഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഏറ്റവും മാസീവ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഭാഗമാണ് സെറീബ്രൽ ഹെമിസ്ഫിയേഴ്സ് അതിനെ നമ്മൾ ടീൽ ആൻഡ് സെഫലോൺ എന്ന് വിളിക്കും പിന്നെ സെറീബ്രൽ ഹെമിസ്ഫിയേഴ്സിൻ്റെ ഫ്രണ്ടിലായിട്ട് രണ്ട് ചെറിയ ഓൾഫാക്ടറി ലോബുണ്ട് അതിനെ നമ്മൾ റൈൻ ആൻഡ് സെഫലോൺ എന്ന് വിളിക്കും പിന്നെ ഒരു ഡയൺ സെഫലോൺ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഭാഗമുണ്ട് രണ്ട് സെറീബ്രൽ ഹെമിസ്ഫിയേഴ്സിൻ്റെ ഇടയിൽ ഇങ്ങനെ വെജ്ഡായിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സ്ഥലം നമുക്കത് അത്ര പുറത്തേക്ക് കാണില്ല അപ്പം ഇത് മൂന്നാണ് ശരിക്കും പ്രോസൻ സെഫലോണിൻ്റെ ഭാഗങ്ങൾ മെയിനായിട്ട് പിന്നെ മിഡ് ബ്രെയിൻ മിഡ് ബ്രെയിനിൽ നാല് ലോബാണല്ലേ അതിനകത്ത് രണ്ടെണ്ണം ഓഡിറ്ററി ലോബാണ് രണ്ടെണ്ണം ഒപ്റ്റിക് ലോബാണ് അപ്പം നാല് ലോബുകൾ ടോട്ടലി ഉള്ളത് കാരണം ഇതിനെ ഒരുമിച്ച് വിളിക്കുന്ന പേരാണ് കോർപ്പോറ ക്വാഡ്രിജമന ഇപ്പം നമ്
now uh, the uh, in the brain around the brain the nervous tissue uh, it is arranged in two concentric layers there are two layers uh, which consist of the nervous tissue of the brain the outer layer is called as the gray matter and the inner layer is called as the white matter so uh, outer gray matter what does it composed of why is it looking gray it is because you know that the nervous tissue is made up of neurons and the neurons are having two parts the uh, nerve cell body and the axons the axons are otherwise called as the nerve fibers most of which are myelinated most of the nerve fibers or the axons are covered by uh, myelin sheath and um, in regions where the cell bodies are concentrated Uh, that region those regions will appear gray that region is called as the gray matter and in those regions where the axons are concentrated or the nerve fibers myelinated nerve fibers are concentrated they appear white and they constitute the white matter so the brain is composed of outer gray matter which consists of the cell bodies of neurons and the inner white matter which consists of the myelinated nerve fibers and in an earlier video we had uh, had a discussion on the three divisions of the brain which consist of the fore brain mid brain and hind brain and uh, just like human brain the rabbit brain is also covered by a protective covering which is called as the meninges and this meninges it consists of three layers the outermost layer which is tough and fibrous it is called as the dura mater the second layer which is uh, 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 which is like a network it is called as the arachnoid membrane and the third layer is called as the pia mater so the uh, layer which is opposed to the brain is called as the pia mater which is close to the brain surface is the pia mater outermost is the dura mater there is space in between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater it is called as a sub dural space and there is space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater it is called as a sub arachnoid space and the sub arachnoid space consists of a fluid consists of the fluid which is called as a cerebrospinal fluid now coming to the parts of the brain you can see a dorsal view and ventral view of the rabbit brain and uh, uh, first of all we will go to the fore brain and uh, we had already discussed which are the parts of the fore brain the parts of fore brain are you can see the olfactory bulb then uh, the cerebral hemispheres and there is a small area wedged between the two cerebral hemispheres it is called as the uh, diencephalon Uh, so uh, here there is an area which is wedged between the uh, cerebral uh, cerebral hemispheres this region it is called as a diencephalon so these are the three main parts of the uh, fore brain uh, that is olfactory lobes which we also call as rhinencephalon the cerebral hemispheres which are called as telencephalon and the diencephalon so first we go to the olfactory lobes each olfactory lobe it consists of two parts this region Uh, in the ventral diagram you can see this region which is called as the olfactory uh, 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 tract which is uh, considered to be the stalk of the uh, olfactory lobe and this region it is called as the olfactory bulb so each olfactory lobe consists of the olfactory bulb and the olfactory tract now uh, there is an offshoot or there is a part of the olfactory lobe which has shifted to the ventrolateral region you can see towards the ventro lateral region towards the sides of the olfactory lobes there is an offshoot of this olfactory lobe which is called as the piriform lobe now coming to the next part of uh, the fore brain that is the cerebrum it is the or the telencephalon which is the most well developed part and it has got an outer region which is called as the cortex which is the cerebral cortex and you can see there are two cerebral hemispheres and these two cerebral hemispheres are demarcated by a groove there is a median longitudinal groove which is called as the dorsal fissure it will demarcate the uh, cerebral hemisphere uh, cerebrum into two cerebral hemispheres and this uh, fissure it is called as the uh, dorsal fissure apart from uh, some of these fissures the brain surface is uh, smooth without sulci or gyri it's a uh, smooth surfaced brain we can see seen rabbit now coming to uh, some other fissures which are seen on the rabbit brain here you can see the sylvian fissure the sylvian sylvian fissure is seen towards the lateral side and it divides the brain into this parietal lobe and the temporal lobe now another fissure we can see is the rhinal fissure which will separate the olfactory lobe from the frontal lobe the olfactory lobe is separated from the anterior frontal lobe by means of this fissure which is called as the rhinal fissure now the two cerebral hemispheres they are uh, connected to each other 
by uh, in the ventral region they are connected to each other by a nerve band which is called as the uh, corpus callosum there is a nerve band called as corpus callosum which is uh, uh, connecting to the two cerebral hemispheres on the ventral side it is also called as the anterior pallial commissure uh, and uh, this corpus callosum it is characteristic of mammals corpus callosum is a structure which is seen only in uh, mammals now Uh, beneath the corpus callosum uh, there is a fibrous tract here you can see this fibrous tract which is called as the fornix now in between the fornix and the corpus callosum uh, you can see a uh, double membranous region it is called as a uh, septum so this is called septum pellucidum so these are some of the parts of the uh, cerebral cortex now uh, the thickened roof of the cerebral cortex it is called as the neopallium and uh, its outer region is called as the cerebral cortex and the inner region is called as the medulla and the cortex is the most important part of the cerebrum which is a center for information processing now uh, one more part which is to be uh, mentioned in the forebrain uh, or in the cerebrum is the corpus striatum so uh, this is uh, uh, this is a the structure of the human brain uh, i just uh, showed you Uh, the positions of two commissures which we have to study in rabbit brain also it is there in the human brain so i was just uh, giving a, a structure of the human brain um, for the time being uh, and uh, uh, in rabbit brain also uh, just beneath the uh, cerebral hemispheres uh, there are uh, thickened regions on uh, on the thick ventrolateral region and the thick ventrolateral wall of each cerebral hemisphere it is consisting of many uh, nerve ganglia collections of neurons there are collections of nerve fibers which are called as nerve tracts so that region is called as the corpus striatum just beneath the cerebral hemisphere there is corpus striatum corpus striatum is not shown in this diagram but these two corpus striata so uh, corpus uh, each cerebral hemisphere is having a thick ventrolateral wall and um, these ventrolateral wall are called as corpus striata and these these two corpus striata are connected by um, a, a nerve tract it is called as the anterior commissure so this is the position of the anterior commissure uh, just for uh, showing the position of the anterior commissure i showed you this diagram this diagram actually belongs to uh, human brain this is that of the human brain so these are the various parts of the uh, four brain that is the olfactory bulb the olfactory tract uh, which mainly con which constitute the olfactory lobe then uh, there is a pyriform lobe which is the offshoot of the olfactory lobe then the cerebrum which is made up of cerebral hemispheres and we mentioned the various fissures the corpus callosum which is found only in mammals the neopallium the roof and the corpus striata which are connected together by the anterior commissure now we come to the uh, uh, diencephalon which is also a part of the four brain Uh, this diencephalon uh, diencephalon is covered over by uh, the cerebrum diencephalon is covered over by the cerebrum and one of the features of the diencephalon is that uh, this uh, diencephalon consists of a region um, which is called as the optic chiasma what is this optic chiasma so you can see the optic chiasma optic chiasma is the place where the optic nerves cross together you can see here the two eyes and the optic nerves which are emerging from these eyes they are the sensory nerves coming from the eyes and just before entering into the brain just before entering into the optic centers of the brain they are crossing with each other some of the nerve fibers from the right side, uh, right eye are crossing to the left side and some of the nerve fibers are crossing to the uh, right side so the region where they cross together it is called as the optic chiasma that is seen uh, just at the region of the diencephalon so this is also characteristic of the diencephalon the presence of optic chiasma where the optic nerves cross with each other now the diencephalon has got a floor that is glandular and this glandular floor is called as the hypothalamus from this hypothalamus arises a stalk like structure the stalk like structure is called as infundibulum and at the end of the infundibulum uh, you can see the endocrine gland which is called as the posterior pituitary uh, sorry which is called as the pituitary uh, so this is also a part of uh, a diagram of the human brain but the same uh, uh, constituents are there in the rabbit brain also the same uh, kind of arrangement can be seen in rabbit brain also so the glandular flow hypothalamus from which the infundibulum the stalk of the pituitary and the pituitary gland can be seen now 
on the dorsal side of uh, this giant cephalon there is a structure called as a pineal body and this pineal body it is held on a stalk which is called as the pineal stalk so in this diagram you can see the pineal body which is seen on the dorsal side of the giant cephalon now uh, this uh, giant cephalon on the floor of the giant cephalon there is a median thickening this is called as the tuber cinereum giant cephalon on the floor of giant cephalon there is a median thickening called as a tuber cinereum and this tuber cinereum gives rise to at the end of it there can be seen two mammillary bodies there are two mammillary bodies they integrate the uh, impulses coming from the uh, uh, nose no nasal cavities that is the olfactory impulses are being integrated in, by these mammillary bodies so these are the various parts of our brain now we come to the midbrain the midbrain uh, consists of four lobes there are four lobes in the midbrain you can see sc they are the superior colliculi and ic which are called as the inferior colliculi so these are the two superior colliculi and these are the two inferior colliculi that make up the midbrain so since there are four lobes it is called as corpora quadrigemina and the superior colliculi are also called as optic lobes which integrate the visual impulses and this inferior colliculi are also called as the uh, auditory lobes which integrate auditory uh, uh, auditory impulses and the two optic lobes are connected together by the posterior commissure i already showed you a diagram showing the positions of anterior and posterior commissures the anterior commissure connects the corpus tria corpora striata and the posterior commissure connects the two optic lobes now on the floor of uh, this uh, midbrain there are two thickened areas there are two uh, thickened areas of nerve fibers they are called as a crura cerebri so these are th these regions they represent the crura cerebri on the uh, uh, floor of the midbrain they are thickened areas they connect the parts of our brain and midbrain and they are called as crura cerebri singular crus cerebri so these are the parts of the midbrain now coming to the hind brain the hind brain consists of cerebellum or the metencephalon and uh, the medulla oblongata so coming to the uh, cerebellum so here you can see the cerebellum the cerebellum consists of two cerebellar hemispheres this one and this one and a median structure which is called as the vermis there is a median part called as the vermis and these two are the cerebellar hemispheres and you can see unlike the cerebrum the cerebellum is highly wrinkled the cerebellar surface is wrinkled and the two cerebr cereb cerebellar hemispheres they are connected by a nervous band here you can see it is called as the pons veruli so this is a lateral section of the brain stem where you can see the cerebellar hemispheres are connected by a uh, nervous band which is called as the pons veruli that is also a mammalian feature now uh, each looking at each cerebellar hemisphere you can see there is an irregular lobe which is called as the flocculus and uh, as i told you earlier the surface is highly wrinkled and these ridge like structures so these convolutions they are called as the uh, gyri and these grooves or the indentations they are called as the sulci now when you take a section through the cerebellum uh, you can see that the white matter is growing in inward uh, outward into the gray matter in the form of a tree and this tree like structure which is formed by the uh, outward radiation of the uh, white matter into the gray matter this is called as arbor vitae a r b o r v i t a e arbor vitae so this is a, a characteristic feature of cerebellum so here you can see the arbor vitae growing in a tree like manner now the cerebrum the cerebellum it is connected to other parts by three pairs of fibrous tracts these three pairs of fibrous tracts are called as superior cerebellar pedungal the middle cerebellar pedungal and the inferior cerebellar pedungals they are actually collections of nerve fibers which form tracts and these tracts are connecting uh, the cerebellum to other parts of the brain they are called superior middle and inferior pedungals now coming to the last part of the uh, brain which is called as the uh, medulla oblongata uh, this medulla oblongata it is also called as a myelin cephalon and uh, this is the posterior most part of the brain which connects the brain to the spinal cord so these are the various parts of the brain 
Now we have to mention the cavities which are seen inside the brain that we will discuss in another video which are the cavities seen inside the brain. Okay, thank you. Today we will have a discussion on the various cavities or the ventricles of rabbit brain. So there are cavities inside uh, the brain of a rabbit uh, and uh, these cavities in the brain of vertebrates there are cavities and these cavities are called as ventricles. And uh, these cavities contain a fluid which is called as the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the same fluid that is present uh, uh, in the subarachnoid space uh, in between the meningeal membranes. Uh, so there is cerebrospinal fluid inside. Now we go to the uh, various cavities. So the uh, these two, these two cavities are seen inside the cerebral hemispheres, and they are called as the first and second ventricles. They are otherwise called as the para C. So they are seen inside the cerebral hemispheres. Now they are the first and second ventricles. Now we have the third ventricle which is present inside the diencephalon. It is called as the third ventricle or the diaceal. Uh, this diaceal, uh, imagine it as a chamber uh, and this chamber has got a roof. On this roof there is a thick uh, non-nervous vascular area which is richly supplied with blood vessels and that area uh, on the roof of this chamber which is called as diaceal uh, that area which is thick non-nervous and vascular it is called as the anterior choroid plexus and that place is concerned with anterior choroid plexus is concerned with the uh, secretion of the cerebrospinal fluid then imagine this as a chamber whose sides are made up of nervous tissue which are called as optic thalami and the floor as we already saw uh, that the floor of the diencephalon is glandular it is called as a diencephalon and the anterior border the anterior border of this chamber called as a diacyl this anterior border it is called as lamina terminalis it is a membranous border which is seen on the anterior side of this chamber so this is all about the diacyl so this cavity is a diaceal. It has got a thick non-nervous non -nervous vascular roof called as the anterior choroid plexus which is concerned with the secretion of cerebrospinal fluid. The walls are called as optic thalami and the anterior border uh, it is uh, called as lamina terminalis. It is a membranous region and the glandular floor is called as hypothalamus and from the hypothalamus is produced the gland called as pituitary on its stalk which is called as infundibulum. Now we come to these two cavities, small cavities which are seen inside the midbrain. They are called as the mesocele. Then we have uh, the uh, fourth ventricle which is seen inside the uh, medulla oblongata. It is called as the myelocele or the fourth ventricle. Now we can see a canal which is connecting, a canal which is connecting, a duct which is connecting the diaceal or the third ventricle with the myelocele or the fourth ventricle. This duct is called as iter. I-T-E-R, iter or aqueductus sylvius. So this is connecting the third and the fourth ventricles. And uh, similarly what we saw in diaceal, the myeloseal, it is also having a thick non-nervous vascular area that is called as the posterior choroid plexus. So anterior choroid plexus is seen uh, in the diaceal and uh, on the roof of the diaceal and the posterior choroid plexus is seen on the roof of the myeloseal. Now even though uh, it is not shown in the diagram, there, there are uh, two more small cavities inside the cerebellum. Uh, they are called as the uh, metaseal or episeal. They are very uh, inconspicuous and uh, they are not shown in the diagram but they are named as metaseal or episeal seen inside cerebellum. So that is all about the cavities inside the rabbit brain.